Assalamu alaikum dear brothers and sisters. Another uh, episode of Cooking Time and today we have butter cookies. We're going to make it look all pretty and fancy uh, and inshallah we hope that you make it at home and enjoy it. Uh, today I've actually decided to make something that's really really calming. So. These beautiful purple flowers are called uh, cowslip or borage. And um, when I was looking uh, the word up in on the dictionary, it was very interesting for me because in Farsi, we call it golegov, zabon. Gol means flower, gov means cow, and zabon means tongue. So cowslip and golegov, zabon, it's like sort of a transliteration of them. And then uh, these little um, hairy bits, they're called uh, valerin uh, or garden helitrope. Okay, and uh, they actually they're very very aromatic, and they smell great. And uh, you know it, this drink is great to have like if you're under a lot of stress, if you have a busy day ahead of you. Um, the best way is always, as I say, to uh, steam it in a flask, and let it stay there, let it brew it, it brew inside itself for like 15, 20, 30 minutes, and then it's ready, and you can have like a few um, cups throughout the day. So. The measurements depend on how many people you're making it for. This would be for like two people. And I like my um, cowslip um, uh, herbal tea very strong. I like to have like um, this. I like to have the flavor there. So I'm going to add about half a cup of this um, cowslip. And uh, when I say half a cup, remember that because it's dried, it's sort of like puffy. So um, it's not that much. And then I'm just going to add a few sticks of the uh, the other one, I forgot the name. What was the name of this? Does anybody remember? <laughs> garden heli oh, okay. Helitrope. Helitrope, yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> the Garden Helitrope. Thank you, Zainab. So I'm going to add the, this to here. And I'm just going to add um, some boiling water on top. And that's it. That's our Golegov Zabon drink. Uh, the color is beautiful and the uh, health benefits are definite like I definitely suggest you try it out today we're gonna do butter cookies one of my favorite I keep saying that one of my favorite everything I make here is my favorite. favorite yeah so obviously I'm a big foodie um, so uh, it's actually a very easy cookie to make uh, the ingredients are quite simple but the outcome is outrageous honestly so we're gonna start with two cups of flour and I'm using here uh, all-purpose flour uh, and I'm using confectioner's sugar now for the amount of confectioner's sugar you can start from half a cup and you can go up to as as much as three three quarters of a cup I wouldn't recommend going more because butter cookies are known for their very soft sweetness their slight sweetness so we don't want to make it overly sweet right so all we're gonna do here is we're gonna add our uh, dry ingredients to the big bowl and I'm using a stand mixer today but if you don't have a stand mixer not to worry you can uh, make this in your uh, food processor at home so everything that I'm doing here you can do it in the food processor you add the dry ingredients you pulse it so they get mixed and then the process will go on so these are uh, the rest of my dry ingredients. I'm going to add some bran, about one tablespoon of bran. I have uh, one teaspoon of malt powder, uh, one teaspoon of wheat germ, and a quarter or one eighth of a teaspoon of salt, because salt always brings out the flavor of everything. And like we always use it in our desserts. So I'm just going to give that a quick whisk. Uh, Sister Fatima, is mm -hmm. there a reason that you're using like powdered sugar? Cannot yeah, not be ordinary question. sugar? Uh, so this cookie uh, is one that is not, you know, like usually in cookies you have to beat the butter and the sugar together a lot to get it yeah. nice and fluffy, right? But in this recipe, like I said, we're going to mix it with our flour. So we're using a uh, powdered sugar because the cooking time is like pretty low mm -hmm. and uh, we uh, it's not going to melt if we use caster sugar it's mm -hmm. not going to melt so you're going to have chunks of oh sugar right, under sugar your teeth you don't want that right so that's why we're using powdered sugar and if you don't have it uh, you can easily um, grind your sugar in your food processor or coffee grinders uh, and use it in here now i'm going to take these out of the way i have um pistachios crushed pistachios uh, that I'm going to be using in this recipe uh, this is about half a cup I can say between um, 
one quarter and half a cup or one third of a cup of uh, mm, pistachio. These are optional, the ones that I'm, I'm saying now. Uh, you can add whatever you like. Here I have um, flaked almonds. You can use crushed almonds as well, but from my experience, I find that these brown really nicely. They toast up beautifully and they look really, really nice. And sprinkles. Kids love sprinkles. <laughs> love sprinkles. So, <laughs> yeah, whenever my son sees these, he's like, Mommy, can I have some candy? So I'm going to be using some sprinkles as well. <coughs> so we can use other nuts as alternatives. Yeah, definitely. Like, like, like hazelnuts, walnuts and hazelnuts walnuts. would be good. But you have to crush them, but not so much. We don't want to make them powder. Mm -hmm. I'll show you. In the end, we're going to roll the cookie inside those, and then we're going to cut them, right? So we want it to sort of be chunky, and we this is like the decoration for the exterior of the cookie mm -hmm. it it gives it a great toasty flavor and also a, a what do you call it chunky elements mm -hmm. right um so i have 200 grams of butter here that i've cut into smaller chunks i'm gonna add <coughs> my dry ingredients in here and I'm using the paddle attachment. I'm going to get this running. Meanwhile, uh, while this is running, I'm going to use, um, I'm going to separate the egg yolk from the egg white because in this recipe, we're only going to use the egg yolk. And the reason is um, we want the fat element from the egg, which is the yolk. So that's going to be enough for us. Uh, there is one alternative. If you want an egg-free uh, recipe, you can add about 50 grams more to the butter and take away the egg. Mm -hmm. But I find the texture of, of adding the egg better. It's a little moister. It gets too crumply, but it's up to you. All right, just enough to get the dry ingredients combined. Now I'm going to go ahead and I've, I've uh, cut my butter into smaller chunks. Mm -hmm. I'm going to mm, spread that over the flour. We're going to sort of get this mixing so we have a sort of like a pie crust uh, mm -hmm. consistency. It's a crumbly because yeah. we only have butter. We have only butter for the wet element, right? So this is our egg yolk. And I'm going to add my vanilla to here because it's easier to incorporate it in here. And it gets, it, it gets distributed better. I'm just going to use a few drops. This is really good, um, good strong vanilla. vanilla, yeah. And I'm just going to sprinkle this on top of like the batter and I'm just going to get it mixed and then I'm going to bring it uh, on the table. I'm not going to knead it or anything. We don't want to overwork the gluten. We don't want to activate the gluten. We don't want hard cookies, hard biscuits. We want it to be really soft and crumbly. So uh, I'm just going to uh, sort of uh, make a ball out of it and roll it. All right, so I have rolled my cookies. And uh, if you could see while you guys were talking and while I was also <laughs> contributing to the discussion, my, my uh, mm, sort of cookie dough was really crumbly. And the reason was that I left my butter out from the morning and we started recording it at like around noon. So it didn't um, get warm enough. So you want to make sure to leave your butter and we're using 200 grams of butter, which is quite like a big chunk. So it, it needs some time to reach room temperature or even a little, we don't want warm but we want softened butter, okay? So we don't have the problem that I had. Um, softened is in like still in, in, in solid? It's, uh, it's spreadable. Not melted. Oh, okay, it's cool, spreadable, cool. but it's not melted. Now, I waited a little so that the butter would melt, and then there I have it. I have my... Rolls? Um, yeah, rolls. So uh, I used vanilla in my butter cookies because I wanted to keep them classic. You can <coughs> use um, rose water extract uh, and... Rose water is different from rose water extract because extract is like, you know how vanilla is really, really strong. You only need to need a few drops. It's, consistency. it's very, very thick. So it gives it a really amazing smell. And I, th I would uh, couple that with the pistachio one because I think pistachio and rose, rose water, water go water really go. well together. Yeah. And pistachio, well, we are, we're using it in small amounts here. If I'm, yeah, yeah we, it's amount. like chunks, right? Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my um, almonds here. Okay. I'm going to spread it and my pistachios and my sprinkles. <laughs> you know something about rose water, which was really interesting to me and mm. shocking, actually, yeah. that many people don't like to have rose water in their food or cookies. Yeah, because they feel that they are 
actually eating a flower or a rose. <laughs> a lot of Westerners, exactly. they don't like rose they water. Don't like it at I guess all. we're so used to it, you know, yes. like we find it really interesting. So, what I'm going to... So rose water. <coughs> really? Sorry? I feel so left out. I hate rose water. Mm -hmm. Just okay. hate it. Well, I didn't use it here, so... Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my wrap, and I'm going to do this for all of the fillings, right? I'm going to take my wrap and I'm going to sort of press the filling around, all right? Now what I'm doing is I'm making a crust around my cookie, okay? Mm -hmm. so, and then these are going to toast and they're going to look really nice and taste awesome. So I guess I'm, that's all I'm going to do. You guys can go on. See, it's easier with the sprinkles. Yeah. They, spring, they uh, stick faster. So what you have to do is just roll your um, wrap, cling wrap, and then just press it. Yeah, that's yep. it. So that's it. <coughs> You're going to have them in the... And then it's going to go in the fridge. Oh, fridge. We need the butter inside here. To fridge or freezer. Uh, or freezer. It, like, it depends. In the fridge for half an hour, one hour. In the freezer for 15, 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. To get it hard enough because we're going to cut them. All right. So my uh, cookies have chilled. I took them out from the freezer. I put them in the freezer because I wanted them to sort of chill faster. Um, all we do now is that we roll, we, we made rolls out of them and all we do is that we slice them. So I did it with my pistachios and with every one, with every uh, cut that I did, I sort of dunked it back inside the nut that I was uh, mm -hmm. using. So I would get some on top as well. So now I'm going to go to the sprinkly one. Funfetti cookies. Yay, sprinkles. Yeah. So it's not that hard to cut them. No, no, no. I do. <laughs> so uh, all I'm doing is I'm using a sharp knife. You don't want to use like a... Dull knife? Yeah. A blunt knife? A blunt knife because it'll mm, just make the cookies crumble. And remember, these have a really, really, really sensitive texture. Mm, they're delicate. So yeah, they're very delicate. Thank you. And this cookie batter uh, holds well in the fridge for up to, uh, up to a week. So you can make it, you can even double the recipe and uh, you can have it in your fridge and whenever your kids or your wife or your husband craves butter cookies, you can just pop them out and make them. So um, <coughs> I'm gonna put these in a preheated oven, 175, for about um, 15 to 20 minutes, depending on um, how hot your oven is. And then, inshallah, I'm gonna come back with serving them. So the cookies are done. Um, it took about 15 minutes for each cookie to, for each um, tray. <coughs> tray to cook, yeah. And you're going to leave it in the middle and turn the bottom and top heat at, at the same time because we want to toast our nuts as well, right? And uh, do not touch the cookies while they're hot because they're really, really soft and they're very fragile, so they're going to break. You're going to have to wait till they cool down and then you can transfer them to your serving. So. Dish.